load tool desktop. This time, I'm going to edit this time. Edit sub tool 8 million. So let's lower the resolution 2 million. If we lower it again, right there we go. Duplicate. And um, this is a five to one, so we're going to delete the lower. There's the delete the lower. Geometry. Delete lower. Okay, that's locked in. Duplicate. Right. Uh, save this as this file. Yes. So we've still got the original, but. We've got, we're working, gonna work more quicker now. Okay, so the low, we want to just remesh. Uh, so let's use Z remesher again. And we want 2000 polys, uh, maybe just a thousand polys. Remesh this, and it should be a lot quicker. Yes, it is. Great. Yeah, much lower res. Got some areas to fix up, but that's fine. And then we're going to come on to our high now. So the high is like this. It's now a fraction of the size it was, which is excellent. And we're going to decimate this to retain the detail. So if we go somewhere like here, for example, uh, decimation master preprocess pre -process all. Oh, here we go. Cooking with gas now. Cool, that's pre-processed. And now we want to decimate it. Um, so let's maybe make it 5% and we decimate the current. And so you don't really, you know, between those two things, it's very hard to tell. Um, make it 10%. So essentially it's put loads of geometry in where the detail is which is exactly what we want, because we want to retain that detail for the bake. So that's our high. So all we do now is we export them both. So what did I call this? Bake object a high save. And we do the same with this. We export this and we call it low. So the low will be our game mesh. Um, so that's all peachy, and um, we can save that as well. Yes, so we still have the original and the high and the low. Um, and now in Modo, I need to. You can UV in um, subs in ZBrush, but personally, I, if it's I quite like doing the lows in um, in Modo just because I do. Um, so all we do is create a new map, text, uh, UV map, get that open, uh, an edge that's kind of going all the way out on the outside, UV, unwrap, two islands, bam, done, jobs are good and relax these a little bit, pack them, and just vertex normal toolkit, and then soften edges, and reset, and we're done. Okay, so we've saved that, we've adjusted the normals, um, and we've got some UV islands, so this is ready to go. I've saved it, so that, that's now overwritten. So the reason I'm using Marmoset is because this visually shows you the cage when you're baking, which I personally think is super, super handy, because Substance Painter and Designer well, all of them allow you to import a cage, but painter and designer don't show you visually what the sliders do when you're determining where your ray trace starts and ends, whereas in Marmoset, it does. So we're in here, we're in, we're in. And if we go import model, and I want both my high and the low, and now they're in. And then we also wanna click on this new baker, this kind of baked bread button and this gives us our baker group uh, with the things for the high and the low so all we do is we drag the high into the high the low into the low 
and as you can see you can see how high the high is compared to the low by just clicking on it so if we go to our baker and we can set which kind of maps we want out so we'll get all the ones which um, uh, so we've ticked all the ones on that we want 2k we'll send this to the desktop uh, yes uh, and we'll call it um, mom set tool bag 3 bake object A1. save now so if you click on the low uh, yellow icon this is where we can see our cage so you can see it already this kind of like ghostly outline above the surface so this determines where the so it's like a when you bake stuff you're firing or the engine is the baker is firing um, a ray at the mesh and then depending on the nor the normal of the surface of the mesh it's going to determine what it bakes or kind of how it bakes the information it bakes um, and then you fire it from a starting distance on the outside of the model to uh, a position inside the model and for me marmoset it's no one's done this yet and i think it's really good for when you're first learning um, you can visually see where the mask is going to pull the information from um, just before i carry on i'm just going to turn this down to 1024 so that we get faster bakes so you can see it's kind of ghostly around the edge of the mesh here and then if we we can increase that so it's huge or we can shrink it, shrink it down so ideally what you want your cage to be doing needs to encompass both the high and the low so if you have it really blown out like here that's not going to work because your cage is you know crossing over itself and likewise it's not going to work if you've got it so little bits like this are you know sticking out of the cage because you'll just get uh, sharp uh, areas that just won't won't bake so you're kind of just aiming for a sweet spot where you can't nothing's poking through and that's all peachy and then same with the min you want this less than the max obviously and this should sit with i think it sits either on your low or just below the low um, either or if it's just below the low then the ray is going to go through both meshes and then stop which is what you want um, so yeah so there we go uh, this is ready to bake now and all we do is we go to the toast icon on the, ugh, this bread thing at the top and you just press it we bake away and yeah it's baked all everything out so let's have a look okay so what's this position data world space normal data our normals height data curvature AO excellent so all of our maps have come out and they've come out you know really well as well and we can test this by um, going into Substance Painter, where I will show you how you know baking works now as well, and how that it doesn't really matter what you bake in, you get the pretty much similar results. Um, no, so we're going to do a new project, DirectX, select the mesh. I'm going to go to our desktop, choose the low. 1024, that's fine. Okay, so here it is, our low, and we can turn the wireframe on so you can see that this is the low, like so. Groovy. Now actually, yeah, I can see on the silhouette here that it might have been better to triangulate the mesh before we exported it because we might get some weird information here. So let's do that now. So we're gonna select this. And I'm just going to do Shift T, and that triangulates our mesh in Modo. Super handy, super easy. Uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to move these islands around a bit so that they're not as close. 
and this will just help with nothing kind of overlapping. And we'll save this as low tries. Okay, and we'll go back into Marmoset. And I want a new low, so let's import a new mesh. And it's this one with the triangles. And let's delete this one and just get this one in instead. Everything else remains the same. I am just going to up it to 2K just because we'll be getting more information, which will be quite good. Um, and we'll bake that. Baking, baking, baking. Obviously, it's going to take longer because the resolution has changed. But generally, it's a very simple shape, so it's not going to take forever. Back into Substance and to get a new um, mesh in with a scene already set up, just go to Project Configuration, Mesh Select, and then we'll select the new mesh. And there we go. Um, now, I also be good to, if we close all of these, close all, and we open these again. And these are the same again. Um, all that's changed is the resolution. So that's really great. If we close these again, go back to Substance Painter, go back to Paint. Um, so let's just get import those maps to start so we can see what Marmoset gives us without having to bake in here. So remember, everything you know is super compatible between programs. Like they're just images at the end of the day. Import. And then all we do is scroll down here where it says select normal map and stuff. We're just literally dragging and dropping stuff into the correct place. So normal information, AO information, world space normal information, uh, this is curvature, this is position, and that's it. So we don't have a thickness map, but I'm sure it could be one, and we don't have an ID map because we don't need one. Uh, so what's interesting here is we're getting a really harsh seam right here. That could have been caused by, so it's actually quite interesting. So if we get our, so this one object ignores. Okay, so we've got this. Now, as you can see, you can see the UV islands, but it drops off at the very edge to just purple there's no bleeding and that's what's causing the issue no padding yeah there we go if we bake textures everything apart from the id we'll bake it at 1024 and we'll just bake the high in here and then this is where the cage comes in handy this is where you can't you excuse me you're given the um the sliders but there's no visual representation so that can be quite difficult to judge if you're encapsulating the mesh and let's bake all of these so there we go you can see we are getting more of a bleeding effect so that might be what's helping it out um, yeah, so there you go. So that's kind of bacon in Marmoset and in Painter. But what about Designer? And uh, let's get a new um, use my template. Right click on the package link 3D mesh. You choose your 3D mesh. It comes in this resources folder. And then when you're in here, you just right click on your low. And right at the bottom it says bake model information and that's the one we want and that brings up this window so in here uh, yeah that's all fine we've got the same thing again where we're specifying our front and rear ray tracing values um, and you can match my mesh name and all that jazz 
Um, and then to basically you have to uh, select a bit like in Marmoset which um, outputs we want. So to do that you just go add baker and then from we want the ones from mesh I think. Uh, normal map from mesh, curvature map from mesh, thickness mesh, position map from mesh, wall space normals, height, and that should do it. And then you just specify high in this setup high meshes. Uh, you can do it on multiple UV sets, which is quite interesting, didn't know that. And then all we do is render selected bakers. Yeah, so that's, you know, finished. Let's save that baking setup. Um, and then that's given us all the maps that we want. So all we do is we drag those into here. You just drag your mesh in into the 3D viewer to get that. And then all we do is plug all of this in and let it rip. Now these look, see this is weird, it's it's come out very intense it seems. So perhaps my, um, my what you call it, are a little out, my values. So if we now view outputs in 3D, what's happening? So that seems to have baked all right, the normal. You know, just like Substance Painter, we're not getting a seam. It has got padding, so everything's coming out nicely. Um, in here, so let's get a kind of grey material going, mid-grey, classic. And then just multiply this so we can, you know, get in some AO information. What's this? Height. So let's get the height plugged in. Uh, Wall space normals and position curvature. So curvature looks a bit weird to me in all honesty. Let's see what it looks like. Yeesh. Yeah, it looks a bit intense. I don't personally I don't think that looks correct. And if we get a curvature node, curvature smooth. And grab that from the uh, and let's just boost these hmm ah it's because it's coming from the wrong one that would make sense so that's how the curvature map should look whereas this look like looks like an overegged version so that's kind of with the curvature information on So be, yeah, watch out for that uh, and thickness as well, don't really need. But then what we can use is we can come in and get our like weathering stuff, mass generators, that kind of thing. Just dirt, general dirt. Okay, so here's a good one. This is really what we were going for. Uh, so in this one, in the dirt, we want the AO. So AO, then we want the curvature. Then we want the position, which is this one, I think. Position, world space normal. And that's given us dirt. And there we have it, dirt. Using the information that we've got. So yeah, it's kind of like multiple ways, I suppose, of of doing things. Uh, let me just turn the environment on and get a gradient map for this. Uh, maybe that. And then if we put a gradient map on this, put that into there. And then maybe we have use this as a mask as well, maybe histogram scan. Push up the position, push up the contrast a bit. And 
and we blur it ever so slightly and put that in as the mask. Looks terrible. <laughs> but that's because our base is just the base grey. So what if we uh, just be that sort of rock colour? Well, what's not quite nice is we're just, you know, affecting the awful. Maybe we don't need a mask. There we go, I think that's that's working better. It's quite nice being able to add the kind of add things in a nodal capacity rather than anything else. Now you can see the seam coming through again, so that might be another downfall of doing it this way. But you could create your you know your rocky surface, export that out as a material, and then get that back into Substance Painter. Whereas, you know, in Substance Painter, we can literally just come in now and go Smart Materials. Is there some kind of rock we can use? Not one. And, you know, there you go. Yeah, there's a bit of concrete for you. Or perhaps it's, you know, pure gold. And we still get all our information through. Get no seams. Lovely. Maybe it's a lump of copper. It's quite nice actually flapping about with this. Um, and then we could go, right, well, maybe it's, I don't know, concrete. And then what kind of like weathering could we have on it? Dirt. And then there you go, you've got some dirt on it. So like some people just bake solely in designer, some in painter, some in marmoset. I think painter is your, you know, all round good one just because it's so easy to set up and then bake and then um, just apply material straight away and not have to worry about um, seams so much. Um, but yeah, kind of baking assets used to be quite tedious until about maybe two or three years ago um, when things like Substance Painter really started to kick off and it's um, it's now super easy to do this kind of thing um, and then it, because everything's you know this um, procedural non-destructive workflow you can do like we can just tweak the amount of dirt we want on this asset. We can tweak, you know, how it's where it affects it, that kind of thing. It's, you know, in all honesty, it's a it's a godsend for game dev and making game art. Um, yeah, 